Hey, everybody, this is Birch. I'm talking comic numbers here. Uh, legitimate question. It's like one of those true, like, hey, what is going on with this in comics question? And I haven't gotten one of those. A lot of the questions lately have been like, you know, why is X company stupid? Why is this move being made, et cetera, et cetera. But we're going to go into this one. It says, um, there's no there's no intro. You just go right into it. It says, why can't Comicron use Lunar and Penguin numbers? Aren't Penguin numbers readily available? No. Um, I don't know the book market, but I thought you could see which novels are doing well based on Penguin and other publisher numbers. If Diamond is all but defunct as a reliable source, why can't they use these two? Or do they not release those numbers? Yeah, they don't release those numbers. And the reality is they don't have to. I think, you know, um, the, the comic publishers, to some extent, get to choose if they want those in, that information released or not. And, you know, it, they didn't necessarily block it with Diamond. They let things go out. These numbers got published. Um, but you know, the comic publishers didn't necessarily like this. I, depending on who you talk to, by the way, you get different answers. I'm um, talking to people at Marvel and DC. I've always gotten kind of a, well, we don't really care. You know, if the numbers go out, we don't really care. But if you get, you know, people sufficiently drunk, they will tell you, we really do care a little bit. We prefer it not to go out, but you can't. It's kind of the old adage, by the way, if you're in business, you can't take something away that's free. Have you ever heard that? It's uh, one of the things if you're you know building a product or you're doing kind of software, the subscription service or anything else, there's an old adage that says, if people, you know, if you offer something for free, you kind of always have to offer it for free. If you start charging for something that previously was free, people are going to lose their shit over it. And so it's a little bit of this kind of as well, which is, well, the numbers are out there and they've been published. And so if we go in there and we say, like, if you're Marvel, we go in there, and we say, hey, we don't want this to happen anymore then, you know, the retailers and other people are going to bitch. And then, you know, we'll look like the bad guy. What's interesting is, like, DC always kind of hoped Marvel would do that because Marvel, if anybody's going to be heavy-handed about the numbers, it was going to be Marvel. Uh, but, so DC always kind of hoped that Marvel would throw down, uh, but they, they didn't. And Marvel would always hope that kind of DC would get angry about it, but they didn't either. So what ultimately happened was nobody... Uh, Nobody did anything, basically. And so the numbers were out there. But when the change got made to Lunar and Penguin and it got dispersed, there were kind of two things that happened. The first was that, you know, you no longer had one centralized source for the numbers. You had numbers coming from a couple different places. And so what that meant was you could say, let, you know, let's use the Lunar numbers, but the Lunar numbers aren't everything. It's just it's, it's part of the numbers. And so as a result... They weren't going to be completely accurate. It's a little bit like the Comic Hub numbers today. It's like it's a small sampling of what's going on. The big one, Random House numbers as well. I mean, it's part of the market, but it's not all of the market. And so, therefore, it's very easy for all parties to go, well, you know, Big one, Random House, you know, putting out the numbers is kind of a pain in the ass. We don't really want to do it. The publishers don't want it done. And even if we put the numbers out, they wouldn't be all the numbers, right? You know, there'd still be lunar out there and we wouldn't have their numbers and if their, their numbers aren't coming out then what good would it be so why are we bothering at all and that's that's basically the logic that's kept this system in place um you know in the end nobody wants these numbers out there well sorry <laughs> the publishers don't the distributors don't you know it's it's questionable about the retailers some retailers like the numbers out there some don't it's always kind of a weird like it's it's a weird thing of if you go to Comics Pro or you go to some of these places, you get retailers who are very militant about the numbers never coming out. And I always found that I found that really, really weird. Like why like why you die on that hill? It's just a strange, it's a strange argument to make. Uh, but some retailers definitely would. Uh, but that's that's basically what's going on with the numbers. And by the way, you talk to 20 people, you get 20 different answers in this topic. You get a lot of people who really want to take the position of, well, I'm not the one holding it back. I'm not the one who's a dick who's keeping the numbers out. I am perfectly open and transparent, and I'm willing to give all my numbers free to the masses. But, oh, woe is me. You know, my dream of being, you know, an open and transparent company is foiled by these other factors that just won't play ball like I will play ball. So, therefore, I guess we're just going to 
I guess those numbers will just never come out. It's a damn shame, but that's the way things work sometimes. Aw, shucks. And that's basically everybody's stance here. But, you know, a different way of looking at this and thinking about this might be this. Um, what's the harm if the numbers came out? Well, if you're uh, publishing lower selling comics, you know, you, you look silly, you look smaller, you look embarrassed. You know, if you're DC, you really want to be considered the number one comic company. You're not. Marvel is doing better than you. But you don't like this, and you don't want to rub, you know, yours or anyone's nose in it. You, you still would like to be portrayed as a number one company. If you're Marvel, you really don't want anybody to kind of step back and look at the numbers and go, wow, we're at a declining curve. I'll, I'll let you know this because this came to my attention recently. It may surprise you to know, you know, despite what uh, some people had said that I'm an industry shill, um, Marvel, to a lesser extent DC, but Marvel in particular, does not like me. Um, I, I'm surprised Marvel knows about me as Perch. Definitely people know about me as Steve, or sorry, by real name. Um, but, you know, Marvel doesn't particularly like me. Um, but do you, can you guess why they don't like me? This may surprise you, or maybe not. They don't like me not because I said, you know, the comics kind of suck, or, you know, they're being written like nobody cares, or there's not memories being created from comics, or any of the rest of that stuff. That's not why they don't like me. In many cases, a lot of people agree with it, including within the company. They agree with a lot of these topics. I get mail from a surprising amount of people, and definitely some names who would surprise you. Who say things like, yeah, I mean, yeah, it is screwed up. Yeah, I agree. You're, you've got it right. What makes them upset is this one thing. I've made comments about pay. Specifically, comments around how the pay in comics is too low. And how they're, uh, they're basically undercutting things. And I've named numbers. I've used things like $65 page rate. That is a cardinal sin. That's what's got people at Marvel, in particular, and to a lesser extent DC, pissed off at me. Not because I said the comics are terrible, but because I said they're underpaying. Now, the irony of that is um, th those videos, of all the things I've said over the years, I've made lots of, of weird jokes. I've done lots of dry humor where I put other people's words inside of balloons. I piss off David Pepos, but screw him anyway. Um, and I know that makes other people mad when I say things like that, but the guy was a dick. I'm sorry. I can be a dick too, but I admit it. But he was a dick. And so if it makes you upset that I'm saying the guy was a dick or he was rude, I'm sorry, but he was. But regardless of all that, the thing that pisses people off is me saying that they're underpaying people. It's me saying that these rates are obscene. And what's funny is that, you know, quote unquote, the other side, that's also one of the topics that has pissed off others. Did you realize that uh, a couple of the yokels out there who say I'm an industry shill who just, you know, promotes comics and wants the SJWs to win and all that kind of stuff, they often use those videos, the videos where I say, I think they should pay more because somewhere in their weird little twisted mind, they believe that I'm saying you should give Vita Ayala more money. Now, Vita is not working in comics at all right now, so I don't even know what the fuck you're talking about, but fine. They're, they believe that I'm trying to vouch for a raise for Vita, which is just a bizarre-ass thing to say. But that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying you should give a raise to Vita. I'm saying you should pay more in comics. And I'm also saying that if you are Marvel or DC or, you know, any major publisher, and you're, you're basically paying $65 a page, you're not paying a living wage. At that point, I've made the joke, but it's actually not a joke. You would be better off working for Starbucks. You'd get health insurance. You'd get, in some cases, maybe unionized. I don't know. But you're going to make more money working as even an assistant barista at Starbucks. And you get health care. Now, granted, I don't know how many people, you know, as children dream of 
serving coffee. I, I, I doubt many. It's not like dreaming of writing comics. That is a true dream. Nobody's dreaming of serving burnt-ass shitty coffee at Starbucks. But it is what it is. Um, you make more money there. So that's the thing that's pissed people off the most. By far. In comics. And so, you know, I, by the way, I've wandered this topic a little bit. But when you talk about, you know, why aren't the numbers accessible? Um, they should be. But there's a lot wrapped up in it that doesn't make logical sense. It's based in pride. It's based on ego. And it's based on basically trying to keep these numbers as close to the best as possible because the reality is the numbers aren't great. A long time ago, and I should do it again, but, you know, I did it a bunch of times and I just did a lot of work. And quite frankly, um, people don't seem that interested in it. If you, uh, if you are, please let me know. You know, give me some inspiration to go and do this. But I do see these videos called sales videos. And I basically track things like Miss Marvel or Thor or Identity Crisis or Civil War all, or The Walking Dead. And I'd show you the sales and I'd show you what actually happened in these books. And I'd draw some analysis around it. I used to like doing it, but I'll be honest. Um, I mean, enough people complained that I just like, you know, why am I going through all the effort? I, I, I shouldn't be, you know, and I, I tell you all the time, I don't really care what people think. And that's, that's true 99% of the time. But if people are like, I don't give a shit about this video, I don't care about it, fuck it. You know, it's hard to get up the motivation to spend the two hours or so making this video when I could be spending two hours, you know, playing with my kid or teaching my daughter how to draw or any number of things. Um, watching Riley Ree videos. I mean, you know, it seems like a better use of time. Anyway, um, those numbers videos also would piss off Marvel like nobody's business. They hated it. They really hated the 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 biggest indication of what was going on with their business, which was number one issues sell 100,000 copies, and then they lose 70% of their sales for number two because the whole thing was propped up with variants. They didn't like that message. You know, I, was, I got one of the nastiest messages from uh, the big... Uh, so, sorry, um, I'll censor myself because I do generally, when somebody sends me nasty email, I generally, you know, you've been watching this channel for a long time. I don't name names. But let's just say one of the bigger YouTubers. And I say, when I say bigger, I mean like a million subs. Not like one of the Culture War YouTubers. I'm talking about one of the truly giant comics YouTubers. Um, send me one of the nastiest emails about the comic sales, the numbers that I did, the analysis. So what do you think you're trying to prove? Saying that, uh, you know, Marvel loses a bunch of, uh, you know, readers from issue one to issue two. What are you trying to prove? I'm like, it's, what I'm trying to prove is that the variant cover schemes artificially prop up comic sales and it's not healthy. That's what I'm trying to prove. I, I mean, I, it's as simple as that. It's like, well, yeah, but th how does this help comics? I mean, it helps comics by getting the fucking publishers out of this addictive, you know, heroin level bullshit that they get themselves into. That's how it helps. But, you know, I, I guess it doesn't help. Anyway, um, the comic sales numbers are not coming back. They're just not. They, you know, the, the publishers hated it for a long time. They finally saw the opportunity to stop producing them, and they, they're going to. So at some point, by the way, the whole system paradigm, you know, the, the, everything changes, and we start having a real digital strategy, and we'll start getting numbers again. But for now, unfortunately or fortunately, common sense is your guide. Does this comic suck? Does it not read like anything? Is it kind of dumb and has no purpose? It's probably not selling well. It probably isn't. Fire and Ice created a lot of uh, YouTube videos because it was yeah, it was a shitty comic. It was written poorly and it was dumb. You might be shocked to to learn, you know, that that comic uh, didn't do well in sales. So uh, there you go. Anyway. Thanks for writing. Thanks for listening. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I already said thanks for listening, but I'll say thanks for listening twice because I love you all so much.